It's IBC 2022 and we are on the leader stand with Kevin. Hi Kevin, good to see you. Hello there and thanks for joining us on the leader booth here at IBC 2022. It's good to be here. What are you talking about with people this year at the show? So, obviously one of the growth areas still is high dynamic range production. Of course. And we're seeing kind of three specific areas for high dynamic range production. First one, cinema. It's always been the premium kind of quality of our industry. It's on a big screen, it's the highest resolution. So we've been very fortunate that leader products like the LV5350 have been used on set by DITS for many years, mm. where customers are capturing the widest possible signals at the highest possible resolution. And they need to make sure they get that right. So products like the LV5350, as I said, have become synonymous with DITs on you know, productions across mm. the globe. And that tool set is then moving into post-production because the tools they're using on set are the same tools that are being used in post-production. Okay. So what you see on set is what the colorist is going to see in yeah. the grading suite in post-production. The next challenge we have now is OTT providers. Mm. They basically are following the same high-end on-set production for cinema but the post-production time is shrunk considerably. Right. So yeah. instead of being six, nine, 12 months, mm. it could be two, three or four weeks. Right. So this now makes it critical that we get this right first time. Mm. We don't have time to do technical fixes, makeups, correct issues. These programs hit post-production. They have to look as the colorist, as the workflow management agreed, mm. get it graded because there's a huge effort going to go into advertise when that program drops and it yeah. can't be delayed. Yeah. So fortunately, a leader, we're very fortunate that the DIT community are using these on set, post-production are using these, and it's bringing that continuity. The next challenge for HDR is live production. And I think you've got another area of the booth. By the magic of television, we're going to go over there and have a look now. We are. So here we are, Kevin. There's a lot going on over here. Tell us what we're seeing. There is. Well, the big challenge we're seeing all of our customers, HDR, sport, live sport, it brings it to life. It makes it look and feel like you're mm. at the venue with obviously lots of the enhanced audio services that yeah. are now available. Yep. But the challenge we have is, yes, HDR looks stunning, but the majority of the consumers are still watching it in standard dynamic range. Okay. And that's the concern. How do we produce stunning HDR images without compromising the standard dynamic range output? Right, okay. Because we're doing this as a single pass. Mm. And what we're showing here is a suite of tools, not just from LIDAR, but how the LIDAR tool is integral to making sure all of that picture quality is correct. So on our 5600 waveform monitor, and 7600 rasterizer, in HD, we can display multiple HDR transfer characteristics. Okay. And that's vital because in these live sporting environments, you're gonna have all of these at play. Mm. So, if we take a typical workflow that most people deploy, acquisition will be based upon Sony S-Log3. So that's the first transfer mm. characteristic. You're then gonna have to create your standard dynamic range output. So there's number two. Yep. S-Log3 is not a broadcast characteristic. So if you're broadcasting HDR, it's going to be either HLG or PQ, which is okay. the fourth. Yep. If you're a host broadcaster, you may well have to provide both of those because your client base is taking HLG mm. or PQ. So you've got four characteristics at play here. So you need to have a tool that can monitor and with the leader waveform monitors we can display here, picture and waveform, yep. so that that HDR supervisor can adjust and he knows what effect his adjustment is having on all of those outputs. Gotcha, okay. In the past, you'd just be looking at the SDR yep. and you're hoping that the LUTs and everything <laughs> downstream yeah, yeah. are not taking you wrong. Right, okay. So that's what we're showing here and the waveform monitors allow you to do this. And the demonstration we have here is in conjunction with Chromarama, 
and our Orion Convert product, which is now being productized by Arja with a color box. Yeah. So this is not a LUT box. Let's get this clear. This is a 32-bit floating point algorithm that is creating the images. And if I step back just a touch here, what you can see is this is the HDR originated content. Okay. Through that box is the standard dynamic range. So your 709, 100 nits. Yep. And then it's brought back from that to HDR. This is what's known as HDR round tripping. Okay. And this is what's been breaking our industry when it comes to this, because there are a number of products today that we use that don't have HDR capability. So we have to drop it down to standard dynamic range, yes. carry out the process, and then put it back into the program stream right. as HDR. Mm -hmm. And here on the leader booth, if you're at the show, I reckon, come and have a look at this. It's stunning. Isn't spot it? the, it's, can you uh, spot yeah. the difference? <clears throat> you can't. You and can't. obviously these are pictures, but as vision engineers, we're looking at this. Yes. So here is the HDR originated. There's the SDR conversion of it, mm -hmm. and there it is returned back to HDR. Wow. And those two, you, we've had several vision engineers looking at that going, do you know what? I can't tell the difference. So here we are in real time making simultaneous HDR and SDR production possible with Leaders Waveform Monitors. Amazing. And is everything you're talking about today at the show available now? Yes, it's available, it's shipping, and for those customers migrating to IP, these devices work with SMPTE 2110, 2022-6, and 7. And they also work in a hybrid environment. So if you're using both IP and SDI, they can operate in that mode as well. So you're covering the transition to IP and you're future-proofing it as well. Yeah. And we're allowing customers to make the migration at their pace, yes. not ours. Fantastic. Kevin, people can come and see these amazing demonstrations in Hall 10 if they're at IBC. If they're not in Amsterdam, where can they find out more information? If they're not in Amsterdam, if you can contact us through the uh, LEADER website, so www.leader.co.jp slash en, because yeah. that's the English version. Okay. <laughs> if you forget that, you'll go to the Japanese page. Um, my contact details are available there as well. Fantastic. If they want a demonstration of these products, please reach out to us. We're more than happy to come out, install them, configure them for their requirements, yeah. and let's make some great television. You really do, do need to see it firsthand to appreciate what you're actually doing, don't you, sometimes? Yeah. I, um, it's, it's, this is making it real. Yeah. You know, this is now going to bring HDR you know, to the masses. It's going to make it stand out. For mm. those of us who've been promoting this for long enough, yeah. We've said this is the biggest transition in this industry since we went from monochrome to color. Yep, yep. And I think we're now at the point where we can do this and make fantastic programming. Kevin, thank you very much indeed. Do check out the website, uh, leader.co.jp forward slash en. Um, and uh, for everything else we're doing at IBC, check out kitplus.com.